really enjoy this. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I need to get a pair of proper ice skates. I only have a old from like the 90s something. Uh, I guess mine is from the same period, but yours is uh, not so good. Yeah. So the only problem is that we only get to do this once a, a year. Yeah, a couple of times a year mm -hmm. in the beginning of winter mm -hmm. since and then the snow comes and no one here is interested enough to clear the ice. No. No one of those with tractors and stuff like that. <laughs> of course there is some there is some skating indoor skating rinks but mm. those are pretty far from here so yeah. Oh. Oh. Now we're going home. Eva is going to sleep a little while. Again. Again. Oh. Yeah. Soon we can get you a hockey stick and mm. uh, and blades as well. Hmm. When you're making a dress, you meet, need a frame or a body. You can either buy one from like a hobby store or you can make one yourself. So we have made a simple tool here to make your own rests. And it's just two planks and some nails. So here you can either make a, like this one, a smaller one, or you can make a, like a big one. The wreath we have on our door is made of straw and that's a really thicker one and I made made it with this one. And to use the tool is really simple. You just need branches. This is birch and sallow. And it's much easier to do it on the sp in spring because they are much softer and yeah, more flexible. Now I think it's risky that they will break but you can do it anyways. Or straw, it's easy also. So it's just doing it like this, bending it around. Yeah, I see, broke. <laughs> the thinner they are, the better, but you need more, of course. And yeah. Where they are. <laughs> so I broke it because it's thick and it's winter, so it isn't as flexible. So my recommendation is do it in the spring. But you can like pre soften them a bit. And then the idea is just to put it like this. Try to fasten them around themselves a bit. Yeah, and then use as many as you think until you get a good body for it. And then you can use metal wire to keep it round. There'll be small branches sticking out everywhere when you're done. So you have to trim it with a, uh, with a tool like this or just fasten them with the metal thread. So now we need to get some more branches to make a wreath. I like to use spruce. I think it's beautiful. I'm not sure how it is in other countries, but in Sweden you need to have your own trees or you need permission to take branches. This is my own tree. You can also use pine for your wreath, and that is also very lovely. I'm not gonna do that today, but I like to use that too. It's easier to get a nicer, thicker texture with spruce. Uh, you need to work a little bit more with uh, pine, but in the end, it's beautiful. You can also just take some pine branches and stick in uh, and use as kind of decoration in the spruce wreath. So. Maybe I will do that. Juniper is also very beautiful to have in a wreath. 
but you have to check where you live because it can be on some endangered list or something. It's beautiful, but the needles are very sharp to work with. And you need a lot of these. So this body you have made, you can reuse year after year. I think I have used this like five or six years now. So it's really good. And then I use a green metal wire uh, to fasten the branches so it doesn't show that much. And I, this is also something I reuse. And then I just fasten the green one in the body here. Just put like that. And then we can start. Collect the branches you want. So now I have a bundle of three small branches. Put it on the frame where I knotted the thread and just take it over and take it twice. One, two. Then you take your next bundle and then you see the thread here, you have to cover that so you put the new bundle on top of that so it got covered and then you do your next two. One. And you can see that the different spruce trees have different textures or different looks. So you can mix if you want to. Or, yeah. And you can fill the bundle out with having the, the more good looking branches at the front. And then you can put another one underneath that doesn't look that good. And then you see the thread and you cover it. So you see here, here is my first bundle. And every bundle I use, I put a little bit further on. And that's how we build, build the rest. You can also see on the spruce branches that are thicker with the needles on top. And under they are, have a, like a belly, naked belly. <laughs> so you need to put them uh, where it's thickest or else it can be, yeah. I guess it could work too, but it's more nice with the thicker needles on top. Here towards the end, you just need to make sure the new bundles gets under the, the first one. And make sure the thread is covered by the first bundle we made. Then you have to fasten the green thread and that I'm doing just by taking the last here and just have it under and pull. Something like that. Then if it feels like it's missing some branches you can just add afterwards.
if it feels like you need to add some. Here you can see you have some ends from the bundle laying under here, so you can trim it because they are some like behind. If you're bothered by them. If you think that some of the branches are sticking out too far, I usually trim them a little bit, maybe. But I also like the more bushy, wild looking rats, so I let them often be. Where I fasten the green thread, I make some kind of loop with the rest of the thread that is left, so I have something to hang it on the wall with. So just, I don't know, make a knot or something. Something like that. And usually I let this, if it doesn't show, I let this keep on hanging here on the back side. So I have something to um, put the thread back on when the red's going down. Now you can decorate your rest if you want to. You can use feathers from a chickens or you can make those small yarn birds. You can also collect uh, pine cones or spruce cones like I have here. Then you can just take the thread and put it under the shells here. And hang it and then use the thread to fasten it on the back side. You can use moss or lichen or you can use colorful ribbons. There is no limitations, <laughs> but I like it kind of minimalistic, foresty, so.
so we borrowed a kitchen up in the village to make our sausages. It's nice to have a big table and more, a bigger space. We made four kinds of sausages. One salami and uh, one what is called fresh sausage. That is, we, we freeze it fresh. So you fry it when you're going to eat it. And then we made a Hungarian styled paprika sausage that needs to be smoked. I just googled Hungarian sausage recipe and found something and tried it. It was lots of paprika in it. And then we made something called Prinskorv. I have no idea if this is something in other parts of the world than Sweden, but they are small sausages that with a certain kind of spice blend, I guess. And the Hungarian and the Prinskorv is going to be smoked. And since we don't have a smoker yet and one of our neighbors just got one, I'm at the place now where our, all our pigs has come from. So the father is uh, making noises here. <laughs> Very big pig. So now I'm gonna hang up uh, the sausages in the smoker and light it up. Ivar slept badly this night and he hasn't slept at all today, so... Almost nothing. Are you tired now? Are you tired? It was really nice to get some sausage made. Mm. It's it's sad when we ate the last sausage from mm. the last batch. Yeah. What I got in the corner? Uh huh. Mm. The smoking went really well as well. So the 
the design on the smoker is not so good, mm. but... But the sausage just turned out well. <laughs> Staring into nothingness. Vad sa jag nu då? Skön. Man var ledsen när de... F- det gick bra. Det var en konstig design. The, the opening where you hanged in the sausage were too small so it was hard to get the long strands of sausages in, into the smoker. Me and my father-in-law has plans for building a smoker that we hope will turn out really good for smoking sausage like this. Mm. It has been in the making for a couple of years. <laughs> at least. <laughs> we have this summer. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> at least he, he has uh, made the foundation. Foundation, yeah. Mm. The concrete. We're going to try to make it so that you can cold smoke in it as well. But it is. We want to say thank you to all our patrons. You make these videos possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're like our producers. <laughs> These videos would not be possible without you. So are it. So I guess this is it for this video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, do Sitt på skolan. Har den börjat skolan eller? Nej, den är bara kort i. Kort i.